Uh, function notation. Uh, it doesn't really add anything overly new or overly difficult. Let's, let, let me show you. If we start with a question, y equals 2x plus 3. Now, you're used to seeing it that way. If I were to instead write it using function notation, I would write it as a function with respect to x equals 2x plus 3. And there's my function f. Now, where this adds some flexibility is now I can put anything in for x. I can say, uh, what's my function of f of 2? Well, now instead of the x, I'm just going to put a 2 in anywhere where there is an x. And this one ends up being f of 2 equals 7. Uh, and then works the exact same way if I were to put f of 0 so x of 0 equals 2 and instead of the x you put a 0 plus 3 and that equals 3 now it doesn't have to be just numbers I can put another variable in I can put f of z so now, instead of the x, I'm going to put in a z. Now it's function f with respect to z. Uh, it could even get even more complicated than that. I can say f of y plus z. And the same thing. Anywhere where there was an x, I'm going to put this piece in. So my original equation, I had a 2 originally. Now I need to add in a y plus z. Here's a slightly more complicated version of a function, but it works exactly the same way. If I were to find f of 2, well, anywhere where I have an x, I have to substitute in a 2. So I've got a 2. Now originally it was squared plus 3 times. Now I put a 2 in there. Minus 10. From here, we can go on to get our answer. It ends up being 4 plus 6 minus 10, which is 0. And that would work for any variable. I can also put in f of z. Now this becomes, anywhere where there was an x, I swap out and put a z. z squared plus 3z minus 10. It's a little more complicated when you look at something like f of x plus y. Because now we have to go x plus y squared plus 3 times x plus y minus 10. And once we multiply that all out, we end up with our function with respect to x plus y. But the method isn't overly complicated. Now up to now, I've only been using f for functions. But functions can use other letters as well. I can name them. I can say the area of the circle with respect to the radius. Now that one we all know is pi r squared, so area of the circle. I can say the circumference of the circle, also with respect to the radius, is 2 pi r. I can, if I want to looking, write a function to say how much it's going to cost me to rent a vehicle. Cost to rent of a vehicle all depends on the number of kilometers driven. So we have lots of different things. We can have g of x. We can have q of x and so on and so on. There are lots of different things that functions can be named. Don't get stuck on just using f of x. Now notice here I've drawn function q. Uh, q with respect to x. Now q is just like having our y value on the graph. Now if I've got a graph here, and if I'm asked to find certain parts, it's going to ask me 
what is q at minus 8? So in this case, I find out where x equals minus 8. Minus 8 is right there. So my q is roughly minus 2. It asks again, same thing across, what is q at 0? So when x is 0, q equals 4. Q when x is 2, when x is 2, oh, y is still going to be 4. And q when x is 5 is going to be 7. So the way to read this is when x equals that value, what is the value of the function q? So when x equals negative 8, q equals negative 2. And there's my value right there.